All right, now let's talk about the Culkin Claisen rearrangements. Fortunately, these rearrangements are much easier to deal with than the Hoffman and the Curtius rearrangements from chapter 20. Starting off, what are the reactants you should expect and what should be over the arrow? Your reactants will typically involve for the Cope rearrangement, so we've got the Cope rearrangement first. The Cope rearrangements reactant will just be a carbon chain with two double bonds in it, and those double bonds, if you count, will be on a chain of six carbons in length such that the double bonds are between 1 and 2, 5 and 6. Okay? The Claisen rearrangement looks very, or uh, the reactant of the Claisen rearrangement looks very similar to that. Only, well, we still have double bonds between 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. We also have an oxygen on either 3 or 4. The way you can always check is that oxygen should always be a single bond away from one double bond and one, two single bonds away from the other. Okay? Now what will be over the arrow for these reactions is the same. You will always see the word heat. So if you see either a six carbon chain with two double bonds at the end with heat, or a, six car or a five carbon chain with an oxygen in the middle with the two double bonds on the end and the word heat, you're going to be doing one of these two rearrangements. And the nice thing about them is their mechanism is exactly the same. The only thing that differs is the reactant and the product you get. But again, they're very comparable. So let's start by drawing our arrows. <clears throat> what are the mechanistic arrows of this rearrangement? Well, start from the double bond between 1 and 2, and then draw to the bond between 2 and 3. Next, draw an arrow starting from the bond between 3 and 4, and draw that to the bond between 4 and 5. Finally, start from the bond between 5 and 6, and now you can either draw it to the space between 1 and 6, or you can draw it from the 5 and 6 bond directly to one. Both would be acceptable. Okay? And the arrows are exactly the same for the Claisen. Start from the bond between one and two and bring it to the bond between two and three. Start from the bond between three and four and bring it directly to the bond between four and five. Finally, start from the bond between five and six and bring it to the space between one and six. Now, what should your product look, look like based on these arrows? <clears throat> well, let's follow them. Let's start with the coat. All right, so we have one and two. The, electro or the electrons from the double bond, the arrow is starting from there, right? So the electrons of that double bond are going to the bond between two and three. This means that the double bond between one and two will now be a single bond, and the, and the single bond between two and three will now be a double bond. So we have, so far, one, two, and three. Now, because the arrow starts from a single bond between 3 and 4, that single bond is going to be gone. It's going to become a zero bond or a no bond. So 3 and 4 are no longer connected, but those electrons from that former single bond are being used to make a double bond between 4 and 5. So now I have a double bond between 4 and 5. Now, 5 and 6 was originally a double bond, but the electrons between 5 and 6 were used to make a single bond where there was no bond, making a single bond between one and six. So five and six are now a single bond, and one and six now also have a single bond to each other. So this will be the product of your COPE rearrangement based on this starting reaction. Notice we kind of ended up with the same thing we started with. We have a six carbon chain with two double bonds at the end. And still here we have a six carbon chain with two double bonds at the end. So what changed? The position of the carbons. We rearranged who's connected to what. At the end of this rearrangement, 3 and 4 are no longer connected to each other, and now 1 and 6 are. Also, the carbons that are part of a double bond have changed. So numbering your, question in this que uh, numbering your carbons in this question is always very important, because that's usually the basis of the question. Where does this specific carbon end up? Okay, now let's look at the Claisen rearrangement. The product's going to look fairly comparable, so let's start with our arrows. 1 and 2 was originally a double bond, but the arrow starts from that, which means it's going to become a single bond. The arrow ends between 2 and 3, which means there should now be a double bond between 2 and 3. So we have 1, 2, and 3 so far. For 3 and 4, the arrow started from a single bond, which means we're breaking that bond. But we, by doing that, we make a double bond between 4 and 5. The, bond, the double bond from 5 and 6 is where the arrow starts, which means it's going to become a single bond. And that bond was used to make a new single bond between 1 and 6 here. So. The products are fairly similar as well. The only difference is now we have an oxygen. Okay, but once again, three and four ended up being uh, disconnected from each other, and one and six now are single bonded to each other. 
That's the general idea behind either the cope or the plays and rearrangement. They're not too different from each other. Now let's do a practice problem that kind of covers this idea of making sure you keep track of your carbons. In general, a lot of the cope and plays and rearrangement questions you're going to get are going to be something like this. Let's say I have a six-member ring. Put a double bond there, an oxygen here, double bond there. And now they're going to say this specific carbon was radio-labeled using C14 isotopes or something of that nature. Basically, all they're going to do is put a little star on a carbon. And that means that's your favorite carbon. That's the carbon you care about, and you want to make sure you know where he ends up at the end. It doesn't change how anything reacts. It's just saying, hi, we kind of highlighted this carbon, so make sure you know where he goes. Okay? So this was the question. We have heat. We have heat, and we have this structure, and we're asked, what is the major product? Make sure to keep track of this start carbon. Okay, so start by recognizing, well, I have heat, but I also have a double bond, an oxygen, and a double bond, and if I count to make sure I'm, what I'm thinking is right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, now I know for sure this is the Claisen rearrangement, because I have a double bond between one and two, an oxygen on three, and another double bond between five and six, and I see the word heat, there's nothing else, this has to be the Claisen rearrangement. So my arrows are the same as always. Start from the bond between one and two, and move that to the bond between two and three. Start from the bond between three and four, and move that to the bond between four and five. Start from the bond between five and six, and draw that out to the, either the space between one and six, or to carbon one. I'm gonna draw it to carbon one this time, just because I think it's a little clearer to see in this question. In the other ones, I had them right next to each other, so it was easier to draw. Okay, so now how do I draw what the final product of this reaction would look like? Well, start off by just redrawing the exact same thing. We can draw things ugly and neaten them up at the end, but drawing it this way will help us figure out what it should look like. Okay, so we started with this, and let's not forget to highlight our favorite carbon. This was six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so now <clears throat> we said starting off, the electrons from one and two were used to make a new double bond between three and two. Four and three lost their single bond, so four and five could get a new double bond. The double bond between five and six, those electrons were used to connect six to one. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just draw a really long line from six to one. It's kind of curvy, but you know that there's no extra carbons in here. I'm not adding any carbons. I'm not reducing the number of carbons. The total number of carbons and oxygens should stay the same through this rearrangement. Okay, so this looks kind of weird, but we can make it neater. So no extra reaction, this is the final product, but let's make it look nice. Well, we know we're going to have a six-membered ring, so let's start with that. Just draw a six-membered ring. And let's start from six, because he kind of is the, he's the important carbon. So I'm going to say that six has moved to the top. Okay, this carbon right here is carbon six. Now, what is attached to six? Well, six is part of the ring, and if we're paying attention to carbon five next, carbon five is a single bond away from six. So let's say this is carbon five right here. Carbon five was single bonded to four, or should I say, I mean to say double bonded, so we should have a double bond between four and five. There's the first half. Now we also see that six is single bonded to one, so I'm gonna draw the single bond to one. One is single bonded to two, and two is double bonded to the oxygen that we labeled three. So the final product you should expect to get, two and three. We still have what we expected. We separated three and four, and we connected one and six. All we have to make sure is that everything is in the right position based on how we drew it. Okay? And that's really what that, these uh, rearrangement questions boil down to. Can you keep track of where everything ends up at the end? They're not that difficult after that.